This lesson is on solving problems involving the determination of the, the pH of acidic and basic solutions. This is part one on strong acids and bases. Solving for the final pH of an acidic or basic solution will depend on the relative strength of the acid or base solution respectively. Let's do a brief review of strong acids and strong bases undergoing an ionization or disassociating process at equilibrium. Strong acids like HCl, HBr, HI, H2SO4, HNO3, and HClO4 ionize completely to produce its ions. Example one is when aqueous HCl or hydrochloric acid in liquid water ionize to form aqueous solutions of hydronium and chloride ions. Example two is when aqueous HClO4 or perchloric acid when ionized in liquid water forms aqueous solutions of hydronium and perchloride ions. Strong bases undergo complete disassociation and the number of hydroxions depend on the chart of the metal ion. Example one is when an aqueous solution of NaOH or sodium hydroxide disassociates in water in producing sodium and hydroxide ions. One mole of NaOH produces one mole of hydroxide ions. Example two is when CaOH parentheses two or calcium hydroxide disassociates in water in producing calcium and hydroxide ions. One mole of CaOH parentheses two produces two moles of hydroxide ions. Practice problem one is to determine the pH of a 0 0.15 molar HNO3 solution. In looking at the ionization of HNO3 in liquid water, producing H3O plus and NO3 minus ions, 0 0.15 molar HNO3 produces 0 0.15 molar hydronium ion and 0 0.15 molar nitrile ion. Since HNO3 is a strong acid, one can directly determine the pH of this solution. So as a result, the pH of this solution equals the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, or the negative log of 0 0.15 equals 0 0.82. Practice problem two is to determine the pH of a 0 0.25 molar CaOH parentheses two solution. In looking at the disassociate of this base, CaOH parentheses two in liquid water produces calcium and hydroxide ions. It is important to know that one mole of CaOH parentheses two produces two moles of hydroxide ion.
In this case, a 0.25 molar solution of calcium hydroxide will result in a formation of 0.25 molar solution of calcium ions and a 0.50 molar solution of hydroxide ions. Since calcium hydroxide is a strong base, one can determine the pH of this solution by first determining the pOH of this solution. The pOH of this solution can be determined by taking the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration or the negative log of 0 0.50 equals 0 0.30. The pH of this solution can be determined by taking 14 minus the pOH value, which equals 14 minus 0 0.30 or 13.70. In respect to the strong diprotic acid, H2SO4 or sulfuric acid, it undergoes two successive ionizations. The first ionization is when H2SO4 in liquid water forms H3O plus and HSO4 minus ions with a K1 equaling large. The second ionization is when HSO4 minus in liquid water produces H3O plus and SO4 two minus ions with a Ka2 value equaling 1.1 times 10 to the minus two. The question is, what is the pH of a 0 0.20 molar H2SO4 solution? The misconception is that since one mole of H2SO4 produces two moles of hydronium ions, one initially thinks a 0 0.20 molar solution of H2SO4 forms a 0 0.40 molar solution of hydronium ion and a 0 0.20 molar solution of sulfate ion. However, one needs to look at these systems one step at a time. In the first ionization equation, a 0 0.20 molar H2SO4 solution produces a 0 0.20 molar solution of hydronium and hydrogen sulfate ion. In the second ionization equation, the initial molarities of HSO4 minus and hydronium ion are both 0 0.20 molar. And the question is, what will be the final concentration of all substances at equilibrium? One needs to construct a rice table. The initial concentrations are 0 0.20 molar for HSO4 minus and H3O plus ions. And for SO4 two minus, it is zero molar. The change is minus X for HSO4 minus and plus X for both H3O plus and SO4 two minus. The equilibrium concentration is 0 0.20 minus X for HSO4 minus, 0 0.20 plus X for H3O plus, and plus X for SO4 two minus. In writing out the equilibrium expression, Ka2 equals the concentrations of H3O plus times SO4 two minus divided by the concentration of HSO4 minus. In placing the values, 1.1 times 10 to the minus two equals 0 0.20 plus X in parentheses, times x divided by 0 0.20 minus x in parentheses.
when the concentration of the acid is close to the K value of the acid, it is best to solve either through quadratic equation or by success approximation methods. We will use success approximation for this problem. In the first assumption, x0 equals 1, leading to x1 equals 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2. This process will continue until two consecutive values are the same in value. For the second assumption, using x1 equaling 1.1 times 10 to the minus 2, x2 equals, after plugging the value in the equation, 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 3. For the third assumption, using x2 equaling 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 3, x3 equals, after plugging the value in the equation, is also 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 3. Since x2 and x3 are the same in value, this process is over. The final results are as follows. With H2SO4 having an initial concentration of 0 0.20 molar, SO4 2 minus has a final concentration of 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 3. H3O plus has a final concentration of 0 0.21 molar. And HSO4 minus has a final concentration of 0 0.19 molar. The pH of this solution equals the negative log of the H3O plus's concentration or the negative log of 0 0.21 equaling 0 0.68. The percent ionization equals X divided by H2A's concentration times 100%. And after plugging in X value of 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus three over the concentration of H2O4, which was 0 0.20 molar and times 100% equals 5.0%.